I think we're live, guys. Let me see. It looks like we are. Let me know quickly how the picture and sound is today. So we are here for a airbrush pastel live stream. One of the one of the very first. And oh, Mr. Steve Lang, how you doing, sir? Good to see you. We have Blue. Good to see you, Blue. We have Mr. Total Pain. Hey, Zeus. How are you guys doing? Brad, great to see you. Uh, who else? We have Mr. Roy. How's it going, sir? So glad you are here. And picture and sound are good. That's really good. Stephen C. Kayak, bike, trike, trike, and outdoors. Great to see you, Stefan. How's it going? And so that is so cool and uh, so great to see some of my European friends here. That's fantastic. It's kind of cool lowering the, making the time zone a little bit early. Hey, Jewel, how you doing? How's it going? Something a little bit different today going into pastel. I've been doing pastel for a very long time, everybody. But I haven't been doing it in the live stream, so I figure... I would just uh, go ahead and uh, draw a curveball out there and do something new, you know. So what I did was today was to go ahead and do a uh, underpainting using acrylic. So I use this in acrylic and I use the uh, Createx uh, illustration colors for that. And Nameless, how's it going? Good to see you. We missed you last week. Hey, Willie, how are you? We are here on a Saturday, huh? That doesn't happen too often. Once in a blue moon, if that, right? That's it. Once in a blue moon. Today, I'm going to be helping you guys out, and I'm going to keep it simple because I want you to be able to start in pastel with very little bit of an investment, you know? So there's two sets you need to get, all right? Let me see if I can zoom in, put this over here. And so what you need to get are the Pit Pastel. They're by Favorite Castell, and they're the pastel pencils. I believe they have a set of 48 or even 96. And you would get them, and you could use that as color over your airbrush paintings, which is really cool. Uh, Oh, that is so great. Yes, yeah, Stefan says he had a self-made paint tweaked by to his needs. That's so great. He's always doing new stuff. And, oh, and Jules says, uh, are pastels similar to airbrush painting? They work well together, Jewel, but they, uh, they're definitely something totally different. And it's great because it's like the marriage between drawing and painting. Also, there's another set I want you to get, and this is a 72-piece set, and this is by Credit Color, and get their pastel set. If you get just those two sets, you're going to be really good to start, you know? Wow, 14 already. Very cool. Thank you so much, Brad said. Hit that like button if you get a chance. Hey, how you doing, Maldives baby? Always great to see you. How are you? So yeah, just doing some uh, pastel. So let me zoom back out and let's just make this a little bit darker. There we go. And what I'm going to do, so the surface that I use is basically gesso, marble dust, and water over a wood panel. And what's really great about this is that you could airbrush over it. You can then go over it in pastel. You also can use razor blade techniques. You can brush on it. It's on wood panels, so it's very, very durable. I did this painting quite a long time ago, and I figured this would be a great thing to start. So... What we're going to do is we're going to going to go ahead and we'll start with the eyes as we always do. So what I'm going to do is look for some nice uh, darks 
in my pastel pencils, right? And this one looks pretty good. This one is 1121-280, uh, and it's like a dark brown. I have a really great pencil sharpener. Of course, it's off screen, but it really works great. So now I have this really nice point here. And what I'm going to do is just start darkening up with the pastel pencil. Like I said, this is the perfect marriage between drawing and painting. Ah, oh, thank you so much, Jewel. I appreciate that so much. Thank you for the super sticker. And thank you, Paul. I appreciate it. Good to see you, Paul. Thank you so much for the support, everybody. I really, really appreciate it. Thank you so much. And so that is so exciting. And thank you for supporting the arch. Yes, Jewel. Thank you. And uh, so that's great. And so what I'm going to do, and I really appreciate that. And I'm just going to start working. Oh, Brad, thank you so much for the super chat. I appreciate that, my friend. Thank you. All right. That is such a great boost that, you know, you guys are really giving me a, a nice shot in the arm on this Saturday night, you know. So thank you for that. And what I can do is I could zoom in with the power of the DSLR. And this way you can see that we can just zoom in here and just like in airbrush we're looking at negative spaces right negative spaces are everything and so it's not just the eyeball but this space the white of the eye which is so important ah fantastic very healthy live stream already something about pastel huh people seem to gravitate towards it and that's great because you know, I've been doing pastel since I was 15 years old. Doing it on a serious level since I was 19. So that's really neat. Ah, oh, thank you. Thank you so much. I appreciate that, Jewel. Such a cool uh, filming setup. Thank you. Oh, that's great. Yeah, I do... Uh, I do enjoy the, uh, the setup, you know, of doing the live streams. Part of the excitement is uh, actually getting all the cameras ready and everything like that. And so right now I'm going to stay within the family of colors, right? So right now I'm going to come in with this uh, kind of uh, yellow ochre type of color here. And you see how I can just... Do very light layers, right? You don't... Hey, Colette, how's it going? So you do very light layers. And by doing that, you're not married to it. And you basically can uh, just slowly build things up. And if you don't like it, you can change it. And I think that's a very important element when working. And I'm just going to come in over here. And you can see you can actually add very very light texture you know which is really cool so blue it's always great to see you thank you so much you are the best and so i'm so glad you're here and i hope you try pastels blue you'll love it so that's something i hope you give a shot and if you ever have any questions i'm always here for you guys if you ever have any questions so no questions a bad question ask away and I want to hear what you, you all feel. Uh, so it says, uh, Nameless says, Tim, you missed this question uh, with all the excitement of contributions. Do you use stencils to lay in the foundation? No, this was pretty much straight on. I just uh, pretty much drew it in and then just went in with the India ink, or not the, um, the sepia with, uh, with Createx actually. So that's pretty cool. And and let's see. And Jesus says, uh, how much pressure do you apply? Very light pressure in the beginning, right? So here I am with black. 
And if I want to darken, I'm just going to do ever so light pressure. And this way you're only putting a little bit of, of that value on there. And then I can come back here with this kind of uh, burnt sienna color and bring that over there like that. Oh, thank you, Maldives Baby says, don't forget to hit the, I uh, like the video, so did uh, Colette. I appreciate you guys. Uh, Nameless says it is, it's true. It's a lot like working with uh, pastel. Uh, chalk and pastel is, they're very similar, right? And right here we have some value. So I'm just gonna come in here and bring in some value here. I'm starting slow, but you're going to see I'm going to pick up speed as we go. So you'll see that happening. And once again, zooming out, you'll see that I'm actually coming in more with this kind of orangey color. And so I started working real close and detailed. Let's bring in this, this kind of burnt umber type of color here. And you see that, how we... Just very lightly come in with color. And we're going to use layers. Layers are so important. And look, it's it's very similar to working with pencil and charcoal. But you're working in color, so it's the best of all worlds, isn't it? Which is really fantastic. And that's one of the reasons why I always loved pastel. Ever since I was a kid, you know? And very cool. Uh, Brad says, what's the service I'm working on? Great question. This is Masonite. And basically, I took the Masonite with my gesso and marble dust mixture. And you just apply it, three coats on three coats, one going this way, one going that way, and one going this way again. And then what I like to do is sand it very lightly in between each coat. And by the third or fourth coat, if you want to do another coat, you just have this beautiful bone-like surface that takes unlimited, literally unlimited layers of pastel, right? So that's so important. And you see, I'm just going to come in here and be a little stronger with my with my values and my application here i'm just gonna see how we're getting closer to the actual photo now the underpainting was lighter than than the painting's gonna be because when we do layers of color we are gonna we are going to darken that up right so we want to darken it up to where it gets to the correct value. And you see how I'm bringing this down? It's really cool. And same thing over here, very lightly. And just like when we're working in airbrush, we are making sure we're going slow, but as as we go, we're actually working on the drawing, which is really good, you know? So, yeah, so this surface I will have available on my website pretty soon. And it'll come pre-mixed, and you just go ahead and mix this. Uh, you don't even have to mix it. Just go ahead and apply it. There's a video where I show how to apply it. And it's going to be very inexpensive. I don't like making, making uh, you know, a lot of money off of artists. So I'm going to make it affordable. And you just go ahead and apply it. It's my marble dust and water and gesso mixture. This way you don't got to run out and get the gesso, the right gesso, because you have to get the right brand gesso. You got to make sure the thickness is the right way. This way you'll just have it available, and that will be just a godsend for everybody right here is interesting because um the under part of her jaw right comes over here then kicks up over here you see like where the chin the uh on un the underside of the chin actually meets the bottom of her neck and right here is 
where her chin actually stops, like right here. Okay, great. So you see we're actually adding this orange color, which is really cool. And Nameless says, Jesus already have a good feel for the pressure. It's very similar. Yes, yeah, so that's something that will come eventually. Thank you, Maldives. I appreciate that. Now, I know you're Lisa, so always a pleasure, Lisa. And so that's so cool to see you. And right here, so these lips have this beautiful orange color. And I'm just going to establish that. See that? And, oh, okay. And you can see I the picture goes all the way down. But right now I can only fit that. So. And once again, we're going to be doing some nice layering and everything. So, which is really cool. So Maldives Baby is a very talented painter. She works in acrylic. Love her stuff. She does incredible portraits. So thank you for that. And and we're just going to come in a little bit more in certain areas. And we're just going to slowly darken up. And then we'll slowly lighten up as well. Everyone's always telling me, Tim, lighten up a bit, right? So that's kind of funny. Um, so we want to come back in with this nice dark. So again, we're working just with pastel pencils. And I think this is a really good way for you all to go ahead and buy those sets and we can work in pastel pencils, you know, together. This, I believe, is 11 by 14. Yes. 11 by 14, so a little bit bigger than what I usually been working on of late. Not all the time, just of late, a little bit bigger of what I've been using of late, that's all. And we're just going to come in over here. And let's start working on some of the darks right around here. Just sort of see how I can come in with this kind of like a yellow ochre it's it's one one two two one seven nine if i have to describe it i would say it's like a yellow ochre with a little bit of black in there and you see now i can start modeling some of these forms here and just like in airbrush i'm working in color but i'm not really going too crazy with uh, going too dark. I'm just letting it get there. I'm not trying to get there right away. You know, Matt, how's it going? Great to see you. How are you, sir? And if I ever miss any questions, just alert me. Uh, a lot of times, uh, especially when I'm doing pastels, I'm like really in the whole one second thing, one second rule. So just let me know. And I'm going to make this nostril a little bit bigger, because it is. Oh, look at that. 19 people. Very cool. Very good. So how many people would like to see every Saturday a pastel, uh, a pastel live stream? And how many people out there will actually go out and buy the pastel paint, pastel pencils to really start learning this and how you can apply that with an underpainting and airbrush. You know, how many people would like to, so so John, John Payne, that's great, that's great to hear. And Colette, yes, so far we have some yeses, which is fantastic. Oh, look at that, Brad as well, that's great. Yeah, let's open things up, right? Let's, let's, uh, Let's, as ever would say, let's turn it up a notch, right? You know, um, you know, I, I think airbrush is great, but let's go ahead and just, just put this thing on overdrive, right? And, and Jesus says, Tim, you have, besides my family, his niece, and oh, oh, that's great. That is so cool. Hello, everyone. 
And so, Sergio, I know you're out there. How you doing? And Blue and Steven, definitely. And Steven will be buying those sets. Fantastic. Yes, so those of you who have been doing airbrush with me, this is going to open up a whole new world for you, you guys and girls. And I'm excited for you because it's totally new. And it's it's going to be great. So this is really good. So, so you can see how just very quickly how I'm able to work this, right? And with pastels, I could actually come in and uh, make it lighter. So let's say I want to make this lighter, right? So you, we don't have to worry about any kind of blue shift. We can actually come over this with another color like this, right? So we can do some really wild things here which is really neat. And let's say you don't like the color, you know, it's like, ah, you know, that color just isn't for me. Well, no worries because the way pastel works, you can just erase it. And uh, Jesus says a whole, a whole can, can of new ideas, that's funny. And Mabel says, Tim, think we're already e expressed to you in the past videos that we like that idea. I know I personally mentioned it. Oh, that's great. Yeah, so, you know, definitely want to always get that consensus. And you see how I could use the kneaded eraser to go ahead and blend if I wanted to. So there's so much, um, not so much freedom. You're going to be like, wow, why do I have this much freedom? I could go from one color to the next without having to worry about blue shift. That I think you're really going to love. So... That's cool. So here are the sets. So just to uh, repeat, so we have the Pit Pastel, uh, and they're my favorite Castel, and you can see here they are, and you want to get these, and they have like a 48 and a 96, and then the Credit Color, and this is, no, that's not Credit Color, these are Credit Color. And they're fine art pastels, and this one is a 72-piece set. So with those two, you're going to be really good shape. You can blend them with a stump, definitely. Now, one of the things I do... Um, hey, Ryan, how's it going? How are you? Oh, I'm so glad you're here, my friend. That is so cool. And so... Um, yeah, so you can blend with a stump. One of the things is... is Try not to blend too early. You want to sort of get your colors in there and then blend, right, guys and girls? So you want to you wanna basically get your layering first and then blend, right? I think that's a, a good way to go. And so we'll bring this up here. And then we'll bring in that kind of ruddy kind of yellow ochre color. So let's say we wanted to, and I'm going to show you guys a little bit how well these, these blend. So here's something that's really fantastic. So what you need to do is go to your uh, UPS store. They sell these packing peanuts. See them? You want to get the ones that actually are like this shape because you can, bl you can go like this. You can get like a whole big thing for like six dollars and it's really fantastic and so what you would do is you would just put this like this and then you can use that to blend your colors out of there how amazing is that everybody so they didn't cost you anything and steven says uh, that the textures will be easier to do and the hard edges as well yes and nameless says tim any advice for using a blending stump and not mixing colors that don't like each other on the stump? These are much better because you can chuck it, right? They don't cost anything. And then you just get another one. The stump are going to, that's going to run you up. Hey there, Mr. Marshall, how are you? So glad to see you. Look how easy I could blend this, Mr. Willie. See that? But one of the things is I, I would want you to make sure you put in the variety of colors first. 
you know, whatever color and then blend it might be a little bit better. This way you're, you're not wasting blends, right? But with this surface, you have unlimited blending, which is cool. Uh, oh, Brad says, Tim, but Colette asked if you can use your fingers. Colette knows the answer to that question. I'll tell you that much. She's a student and that's one of my pet peeves. Don't use your fingers. That's the worst thing you, well, it's not the worst thing you can do, but that's a bad thing because, you know, I had spaghetti earlier and I could be like that and it's like, oh, look, what's that red in your complexion? Well, that's marinara. But also on a serious note, it could be the oils in your hands, right? So you could be going like this with the oils in your hand and then, you know, it looks good, but then your surface gets a little weird. So try not to do that right blue exactly the oils and you too ryan very very cool uh the no the noise is cringeworthy yeah you know it's part of it you know no pain no gain that sort of thing uh so that's cool 24 people on here so i think people love the fact of pastels you know, I think as far as a larger group, not everyone has the ability to get a compressor and everything like that. So I think pastels, look how beautiful that's blending, huh? Come on, guys. This is, this is really nice. Uh, how hard would that be? Uh, how hard would this be if we were airbrushing it? Very hard, right? So that's cool. So, uh, Jesus says, Tim, I use a lighter to create stained colors. Would that work with pastels as what if you would use latex? Latex gloves will work because there's no oils. Just make sure because if you use it and then use the same finger again, you can muddy up those colors. Matt says, what about your feet? Uh, to, to blend, that would be interesting, but I think there would be more oils in toes than there are in fingers, but that's just my own surmise, summarize, summarization, summarize, I don't know how to say it. Uh, happy to see you going into colors. Thank you. You know, I've been doing colors since I was 15, actually. Um, so the thing is, I just been, uh, using just black and white because I wanted airbrush people to really get to the point where they have control of that airbrush before I went in with uh, with color right and I really seen a lot of people were giving up uh, their airbrushing because they couldn't control it and my thing is it's almost impossible to control the airbrush going into color before going into black and white and that's why I came up with the inks because with the inks as well, I was able to create the perfect uh, viscosity for, for having something run through the airbrush. And now those who use my inks know exactly what it takes to thin down Createx and other paints so it'll run through. So it's working out, you know. Uh, Marshall says, Tim, what does the process look like for mixing airbrush in conjunction with pastels? It's actually amazing. And what you do is when you put, you can even put color pastel over this and the, the uh, I mean, color airbrush over this and whether it's paint or ink or whatever, it's going to sit on top of the pastel and then you can mix right over it. So they work together perfectly. Uh, I act oh yes, I actually used uh, Createx, not my sepia inks, but the Createx uh, illustration for this, and it worked out really well. And I did the uh, underpainting quite a long time ago, so you can see now I can start coming in with some of this lighter color, and little by little she's coming along. And later I'm going to show you how you can take some of those hard edges that happened in the airbrush and we can soften them up. So that's pretty cool. And let's see. Weekend Family Channel. Very cool. Very cool. Uh, oh, yes. Stefan loves the airbrush. It took him years. That's cool. And Brad said you can actually use pretty much any body part. <laughs> 
And, uh, and then uh, Nameless says, I've actually seen an artist paint with his uh, pinky. Okay, so that's good. And so, yes, that, that's, guys, let's just keep it very nice. We got kids in, the, in there. So it's a little different than the Wednesday night class. But uh, I definitely appreciate your humor. We just got to make sure we're mindful of the, of the youngins. Right? And I'm so glad they're here. You know, when those young people who are in the audience, I'm so excited. And I want you to start finding something creative that really kind of gets you going, you know? And so that's really cool. So, um, so definitely, you know, work in pencil. But try and find something, whether it's acrylic or oils, and just explore it. And, you know, who knows what could happen from there. It's really quite exciting. So you see, this is even lighter. So I'm actually going to use a lighter color. And you can see how we can actually kind of sculpt with these. And working with the airbrush really helps when going into something like this. It really makes a big difference. I'm going to go in with a yellow because these are all in the yellow family. So I'm going to add this yellow here and look how there's no blue shift. Be gone with blue shift, right? That's a thing of the past. So we don't have to worry about that at all. And we can see how... Now Katya, so this is Katya. Her last name begins with a B. I don't know how to say it. I believe that she's Georgian from, uh, from the country Georgia. And she is just the most amazing piano player ever. She plays classical music, Franz Liszt, Chopin, all that stuff. And let's see. Oh, I didn't, oh, I didn't uh, delete, I didn't, the system must have done it, Ryan, because, uh, you know, I didn't, um, I didn't delete it. So that's cool. Unless I have a secret moderator out there, you know. And you see how I can use that white? That yellowish white and now I can come in but look I can go like that I got a million of them so I can come in and I can continue my blending right now with my surface I'm gonna be selling this on my website when you put this on wood you can put unlimited layers of, of um, pastel on here so you can keep going and keep going, which is great. I'm going to take that yellowish color. This one is Faber-Castell 1122-105. Now watch how I can just come in and encroach on this color without having any semblance of blue shift. And that's the beauty of working with airbrush and pastel together. See as I can come here and work on this light that's being reflected over here I can just pull that over so she is this amazing piano player and I just love her stuff and she's very elegant it's a great combination talent and elegance oh my goodness that is major and you see how I can bring this dark ah so um so the panel has gesso yes the gesso and the uh, marble dust mixture Brad and uh, Marshall says, is that green thing a piece of foam? No, this is actually packing peanuts that you get at the UPS store. You have to get these exact ones that are kind of like a, look like an actual peanut. Well, no, they look kind of like cylindrical. And you can bend them, and they are perfect for blending. And Colette says, Tim, do you spray your pastels when complete? I never uh, do that. I was taught to never do that by Harvey Dinnerstein at the National Academy School of Fine Arts. And the reason being is when you do spray it, you'll dull the color and you'll change the texture and you work so hard. And uh, so I don't spray it. I frame it under glass with a mat and it will last forever. There are pastel paintings that are 
uh, framed under glass that are like 300 years old and look as beautiful as the day it was painted. So when I don't want to put a fixative on it because it's going to change everything. It's going to change the colors and it's just not going to be good. And what effect does marble dust have on canvas? Actually, none differently. The only thing is you have to do a lot more layers, maybe about nine layers, because you got to get rid of that 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 uh, ugly canvas texture. So, yeah, I've done very large pastel paintings on canvas, and it works perfectly. And the airbrush and canvas, the airbrush and pastel together on the uh, canvas will be out of this world. You just have to do many more layers. So right now we're, see how I move around just like in pastels, the same in just like in airbrush, I'll move around. So right now I'm just going to come in and darken this. Hey Alexis, how are you? Great to see you. Thank you so much. I'm so glad you're here. So that is neat. And Oh, and Marshall says that's freaking awesome. Uh, let the let his wife know about those. Yeah, six dollars, and you have like you know a five year supply. You know, I mean, we're talking if you are pastel painting all the time. But you know, the great thing about this technique is that when you're working on the wood, it just really uh, you can actually go back in this with past with airbrush again and it will work together and i think that's what's really cool that it's not just you know just go ahead and do the airbrush i mean the pastel over airbrush and that's it no you can come back in with airbrush yet again and that is to me the the clincher right of a wonderful technique so this i think really uh just separates from what's being done out there not many people are talking about this combination of the two mediums. But even if you wanted to do straight uh, pastel, for those of you who don't airbrush, we can do that as well, right? And, and so that's cool. So everything is doing really, everything's looking really good. If I missed a question, uh, just let me know. And I'll be more than happy to answer. And so that's really cool. And once again, thank you everybody for the super chats. Those are really fantastic. I think we found something here. I think people really like this. And I'm going to stick with the Saturday night thing here. And so we'll still have our, our normal Wednesday night of airbrush and India ink fun. But now we have something else to look forward to. So I have this dark color by Pit Pastel, and this is 1121-280. And you can see now I'm going to show you how we can go ahead and create some soft edges, right? And you can see I work fast. When it comes to pastels, I'm a fast worker. I've been doing this since I was seriously, since about 19 years old, studying with Harvey Dinnerstein and uh but using pastel since i was 15 years old independent study when i was 15. sergio how you doing so cool so let me see did uh someone mention sergio let's see um oh there you are so it's great to see you sergio how you doing i'm so glad you're here my friend How's baseball practice? I'm sure you're doing really well. So that's really neat. And so you see, I'm going to come in with this and I'm just going to kind of blend that in. And with pastels, you have so much more freedom. Oh my God, right? You can really get back and forth. When I'm usually doing... Uh, pastels i'm working on an easel over there and i have my setup and it's a lot more fluid but just to hang out with you 
Oh, great. He's jumping up and down. That is so great. All right. So that is so cool. That's one cool guy, that Sergio. I'm telling you. That is one cool kid right there. And I'm just going to come in here. And then remember, we have our black. So look how fast you go from color to color. And you can blend that in. So someone you might say, you know, well, how does airbrush work with the with this whole thing? So let's say I wanted to work on this nostril. I can basically come in and let me make sure I have ink in here. Let me test this out. Okay. So you have to lower the air pressure because it's a lot harder surface here. But you see, I can reinforce her nostril here. See that? And I could work on some detail, like in this eyebrow. I can come back in. Now, this is really light, so I probably would have to come in with a darker value. And let me see if this airbrush is operational. Um, actually, what I'll do is I'll just come in with uh, a darker mixture here just to show you all. And I'll get rid of the lighter mixture. Spray that out. And let's use the medium mixture. That's nice and dark. And we always test it off to the side, right? That's always important. Put that top on. All right, so let's come over here. And you see how I can blend that in right now? I'm gonna zoom in for you and show you the trick of using airbrush and pastel and then airbrush again. I mean, it's going to open up a lot for you when you're doing portraits. So you see this hard edge right here. We can just come in here and soften this up. See that? And then we can layer some pastel over that. So it's not like you put this in, you have to worry about blue shift or anything. None of that. So you can just soften that edge. And just like when we're doing regular airbrushing, distance is everything, right? So, and then I could zoom out. And let's say I wanted to put a little detail here. Uh, in her eye, I can come in here. And we can just go right over it with pastel, which is great. Uh, oh, Brad says, Tim Murphy wants to know why you like pit pastels and how do you sharpen them? I love pit pastels because of the color saturation and the pencil sharpener I have is right here and that was a gift from a very good friend and that is the AFMAT and that's the PS10 if you live in New York City that's public school 10 but no PS10 is it and it's the AFMAT so Murphy uh, definitely uh, that's definitely the way to go. You will love this, and it sharpens the pastel pencils like javelins. I mean, every time. So, definitely a plus. I did not know until that great person got me them. So, so important. And so that's, that's fantastic. And we're going to continue. So now we soften that up. Now we can come back in with this, and we can kind of blend that in and now we have a nice soft edge where the airbrush made it too harsh so and you see I can go 
I can go pastel, I mean airbrush, pastel, airbrush again, pastel over that. So they really work well together. And those of you who hate blue shift as much as I do, blue shift is a thing of the past. So that is very, very neat. And it's a manual electric sharpener blue. Yes, it's manual, like old school, which is really good. So right here, I can come in, and you see how I don't have to worry about blue shift. I can come in with any lighter or dark color and not have to worry about blue shift at all. It is kind of liberating, I'll tell you that much. And okay, so look at her beautiful teeth. So we're going to come in with this, what color was that? Oh, it's over here. Come in with this yellowish color. She doesn't have yellow teeth, but the thing is, everything is in the yellow spectrum. So, you know, so that's why that's like that. very cool see how look at that this is i forget how much fun it is to work in color i'm going to be doing a lot more of it uh but look at that look how cool that looks so yeah the pit pastels are really fantastic uh really love it look how i'm able to do that I mean, it is liberating when you all do that and you get those uh, pastels, which I know you will, and you follow along and you do your own work. So the Wednesday night, so this is really cool. The Wednesday night will teach you how to do the underpainting. Saturday will teach you how to do the color over the underpainting. So this is like a one-two punch. And it's really great. So I'm so glad I'm able to offer this to you. That no one else can do. You know, this is this is uh, this is gonna be just my baby. And so, you know, all those years of uh, of experience with the uh, with the pastels, they're gonna have a heck of a time trying to catch up. So this live stream is gonna be pretty much one of a kind, which I'm happy to to have that but yes they're gonna really complement one another and uh so nameless says those metal school sharpeners are the best you're right always wished i ripped one out of the wall and stole it last day of school yeah that those are fantastic what were they boston right they were named the boston was the brand name or something wasn't it and G Jesus says, once you sharpen the pastels, you can use the the blade to make a make it pointy, in case you want to create a highlight. Yeah, all you do is use a good piece of medium grit soft paper, uh, sandpaper, and you just sand that down, or even a blade. Oh, that's good. Plain water, zero calories. Trying not to become out of shape. It's not easy. Trying to stay in shape. Okay, I'm going to glaze with some nice warm colors here. And Jesus says, thanks, Tim, anytime. And Nameless says, yes, thanks for reminding me. I'm going to look up Boston. Yeah, that... I don't know why I remember that. I remember the most ridiculous stuff. Hey, thank you, Ryan. Ryan says she's looking good. I appreciate that. Thank you, my friend. And so now we have this nice dark over here. So remember, just like digital art, the lighter the pressure, the lighter the application. So I want a super light pressure here. I'm just going to kind of like drag this over the surface. I'll blend later, but I don't want to do too much blending too early because I want to feel, I want to make sure I put those colors uh, over it, you know? And Jesus says, I think he has an electric sharpener and it's a Boston. Still works like, the, yeah, those things are amazing. They're going to outlast us, right? There'll be no people left on earth, just those Boston sharpeners. Um, oh, that, her nose right here. Right here, it, 
it's a little dark, this little area right here. I'm going to put that in. And then right here on the bottom, it's nice and dark. Like sort of a dark accent right there. And then we have this beautiful orange color. And the orange color seems to be our transition tone and from the darks and also the mid-tone throughout this whole painting. And just like everything else, we're going to make our color corrections as we go, our drawing corrections, all of that. So I promised that this would be one hour, so we're almost at the hour mark. This is an introduction, right? I think I'm still going to stick with the hour, maybe an hour and a half, but we'll continue. And uh, so we'll, when we come back, but I'm not gone yet, but when we come back, we'll be working on a lot of different things, uh, you know, with this technique and encouraging you all to use this technique yourself. Okay, so over here, we'll come to her eye. And I want to make sure that I'm doing her beautiful eye justice. I really wish that I could uh, play her music for you, but I can't because of copyright. But if you heard her music, oh my goodness, you become a fan instantly. And we don't have to go sharp just yet, so we can just, because we're going to be doing a lot of blending and everything. But right here, you can see that it's a little bit darker on this side, a little bit wider over here. Oh, I can sing, yes, but I'd definitely get, I'll get in big trouble. And... Oh, Nameless says, just looked it up, forgot the ones with the square suction cup on the bottom. And Nameless says, $29. Uh, Ryan says, am I going more orange? I may, right? I'm not sure because I do like the uh, orange color. But, you know, when I work in color, I sometimes will change it uh, if I feel it, it has the need. Great question, Ryan. So, you know, with pastels, it's great because I'm just layering and layering and uh, so it's kind of like you know you arrive at the color you like you know what I mean so Willie thought that was funny that I'll get in big trouble if I sing I'll really get some sort of I won't have a copyright strike but I think I'll just have my channel taken off the air so interesting here now her now everything is done with these orangey colors right so I'm going to come first right here and I'm going to put in the darks first, right? So remember, sometimes the adjacent shapes are more instrumental in describing the form than the form itself. And I think that's happening right here. So let's bring this down, right? Oh, I'm off screen. All righty then. Okay, so let's go to her her mouth area okay so right now we have this coming down and then it comes over just like so just for a second and then this comes over here and then this negative shape and that will describe our form basically And if you have a question, just uh, let me know, because right now I'm kind of concentrating on this. And let me know if that question comes, comes to pass. So it is a little bit light right here, just a tad. And then it's sort of like a nice grayish color. And we're going to try this and see how this works as a gray. And I think that's working. 
And like I said, we'll, we have time to get it right, so we're just kind of guesstimating right now. This is all super soft edge. And we'll blend that later. And then right here is a little bit of a thicker space between these two teeth here. And let's move on over and see what else we see here. Oh, there's a lot of dark area here. And then we have this over here. And again, we have that kind of dark orangey color, so we can bring that over here. All right, so if we zoom out, we'll see how good or bad I did. Okay, not bad, kind of liking it, right? So that's cool. Murphy says, what type of paper card do you like using for pastel pencils? I do like the pastel mat. That's great. That's a lot of fun. Uh, I also like making my own surface, Murphy, which is fantastic. And um, Brad says, Tim, can you talk a bit about the significance of light in this process? Yes. So basically, we're painting light, right? We're not painting... When we got to remember that we're not painting the light. I'm not painting the forms or, or the, the person as much as we're painting the light because the light is what describes the forms. So once we really try and figure out what the light is doing and what direction it's coming in, then we'll realize the significance of the distance of the light source two different parts of the person, right? So to explain that a bit further, you can see how, uh, let's say, uh, this shoulder is darker than this shoulder because if we really look at this, the light is coming from the right and to the top. So you can just see that this shoulder is getting uh, more direct, where it's direct is going to be much more powerful than over here. So those are really important things to consider. Great question there, sir. And, oh, Ryan says, looks good. I appreciate that, sir. And, oh, and uh, Stefan says this will help people for a fast process, definitely. And Nameless says, I have people painting the light. I always uh, paint the form and negative space. Oh, you have trouble painting the light. Yeah, I'm kind of coming out with a uh, uh, a way of painting that really has to do with the light and really figuring out what the light is doing and uh, kind of looking at it more of a scientific approach. And I think that's important to have that scientific approach when it comes to this. So... Uh, that's very important. Uh, what I'm going to do is uh, move down here so you can see. But before I do that, let me blend this in here. Just so I can show you the magic of blending. Right? We'll just move this over here. And then we can come in with a fresh peanut. Dun, dun, dun. And then we just see that. And we can just... Make sure you get a different side and you can blend this way. See that? And then get another one. I have a whole bunch. Where are they? Here's one. Okay, so this one, I bought this several years ago and look how much I have left. I mean, there's so many of them. And like I said, $6 at the uh, UPS store, which is out of this world. And you can see how I can just blend this in. So, again, I just wanted to pretty much touch on before I go how we can uh, work on 
her body as well. And the same thing, same thing applies. But look how we can really just build up, right? We can build up the color, which is just amazing. So this technique I've been holding back. So now I'm going to be coming out with it full force every week on Saturday, all right? And I also give classes on this, everybody. So if you are interested in learning this technique with a one-on-one -on -one workshop, which is my mentorship program, please let me know. And I would be glad to have you as a student. So this is amazing. Uh, if you just start out with me, I'll start you out with the inder ink underpainting, and then we'll just go in with the pastel, which is, you ask me, is the best of all worlds, right? And look how she's coming already, just from what we were doing this hour, right? And that's really neat. And uh, thank you, Ryan. And Stefan says, always am amazed about the... Uh, uh, the Verdacci uh, technique. Oh, very cool. Yes. And and you can see I can just take a brand new peanut and if I want to, I can blend, right? And look at this. It's just, you know what? I'm all about cleanliness. And this is just clean, clean, clean. And that's what I love, right? Now, you're very welcome, everybody. Thank you, Willie. And... You're very welcome, Murphy, and uh, that's for sure. And Mike DeLoach, how's it going? Good to see you. Yeah, we're doing a Wednesday. It's still our airbrush and India ink underpaintings uh, and just black and white paintings. And, and now we're doing pastel on top of India ink, which is really amazing. Pastel even on top of, in this case, Createx illustration colors. Thank you so much, everybody. You guys rock. Remember, um, uh, go on inkflingers.com if you want more information. And thank you, Ryan. I appreciate it. Always great to see you, my friend. And you guys are all great. So next Saturday, it's a thing, right? This is a thing. And so we're going to do Wednesday night. And we're going to do... Um, Wednesday night and then Saturday nights, okay? Mr. Steven, thank you so much for hanging with me. Thank you, Blue. Mike D, everybody. Sorry you came at the end, my friend. Thank you, everybody. You guys all rock. And thank you for the super chats. Those were amazing. I really appreciate it. You you helped this, this come alive, you know, and, and the, me to continue, pay the rent and all that stuff. And continue doing these live streams and uh i just want to say thank you everybody thanks john everybody ryan have a